Good morning all. Today we have the pleasure of showing you this semi-detached, once grand village property. Every now and then we turn up to a property and get a surprise. This is one of those times. The price is in the description as is a link to the property on the website. The size of the house is the first thing that strikes you. It is quite imposing from the street. As you will see later, the heights of each level are impressive. Sarah will explain later where the house starts and finishes. The big double gates give vehicular access to the courtyard, which could be a delight, and offers one of two possibilities to enter this home by car. So first of all, we will discuss the location. You are just six minutes from the city of Lusar. The historical city of Coimbra is a mere 28 minutes away. The seaside will take you one hour to reach. However, if you prefer the river beaches, the nearest is just five minutes away. Porto Airport is just one hour and 40 minutes and Lisbon Airport a shade under two hours. The land at the back are marked periodically with arrows to show you the boundaries and I will also explain the orientation. But while you look around, I will tell you a little about Lusar. Nestled in the heart of Portugal, the charming town of Lusar beckons with its timeless beauty and rich history. As the sun rises over the lush hillsides and ancient architecture, a sense of tranquility washes over the landscape. Lusar is a place where past and present harmoniously coexist. Cobblestone streets wind through the town, leading visitors on a journey through centuries of Portuguese heritage. The distinct Manuelan and Baroque influences that grace the facades of the buildings are a testament to the town's past. Each stone seems to whisper tales of medieval knights and noble families, artisans who once shaped its identity. Amidst the historical tapestry, the Lusar Castle stands as a proud sentinel atop a hill. Its weathered walls offer panoramic views of the surrounding countryside, inviting visitors to contemplate the passage of time while soaking in the natural beauty of the Serra de Lusar. The castle's imposing presence transports you back in time, evoking a sense of wonder about their lives and events that unfolded within its walls. Yet, Lusar is not just a destination for history enthusiasts. The town embraces the present with open arms, offering a myriad of experiences for all who visit. Outdoor enthusiasts are drawn to the region's hiking trails that wind through lush forests and lead to breathtaking vistas. The Cadeira village, a short distance away, showcases traditional schist houses that have been lovingly restored, providing a glimpse into the past while fostering an artistic and creative community. The locals of Lusara are as warm and welcoming as the town itself. Cafes and eateries often a taste of authentic Portuguese cuisine, from hearty stew to delicate pastries. The town's vibrant markets bustle with activity, offering fresh produce and local crafts that reflect the region's authenticity. As the sun dips below the horizon, casting a warm glow over Lusar, the town's enchanting allure becomes even more palpable. Whether you're wandering through its narrow streets, admiring, admiring its architecture, or immersing yourself in its natural surroundings, Lusar leaves an indelible mark on your heart a testament to the enduring charm of this Portuguese gem. Good morning. Today we are again in a different location. We're up in the area of Lusar. We're not actually in Lusar. We're in a village sort of 10 minutes outside of Lusar. We have, okay, it looks a little bit shabby at the moment. It's in need of some TLC, but it's a stunningly beautiful, full of character property. We've got 230 square metres of build, which is really quite good on a stone property. It's a stone manor house. You've also got 30 square metres of outbuilding here. 
all registered, ready to go. It's actually usable on three floors because the height in the attic is very tall. The stairs are a bit dodgy, not sure how well I'm going to be able to show you that, but we'll try. Obviously, we can't get in here. We're going to have to do this in two parts. Literally, this is just fenced off because the property is not in use at the moment. So we've driven round. So the garden's behind Paul. And behind me, we have basically the courtyard. Now, if I move out the way, Paul can show you that gated archway. So that could be your entrance from the front. So you could just drive in and park there and you've still got your courtyard garden. Obviously the balcony at the top there, when you're looking out over the garden we're stood in, yeah, maybe turn around and show the garden, then the views are lovely and it's really quite private at the back. At the front, it's on a street, it's got neighbours either side, but with the courtyard, it remains really private. Yeah, there's, there's hardcore, uh, well, concrete standing already there, isn't it? If you wanted to park your cars outside. Of the courtyard, of the courtyard area. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think we're going to walk up the garden. So just to sort of maybe stop a second and try and explain the boundary, because it's a strip of land, so... You can see, you can see the telegraph pole on the, on the right-hand side there. It's just off the boundary. And there's a row of trees that follows up. That's, they're all in. And on the left-hand side, there is the concrete wall behind the fig tree. That's the boundary on that side. So you've probably got about 20 metres wide land strip that runs all the way up as far as you can see that it's been cleared. Sorry, it's, it's, it's how wide? Have I just made that up? You've completely made that up. It looked wider there. Yeah. It might get narrower as it pace goes. It out. Do you want me to go and pace, go pace that? It out. Pace it out, dear, pace it out. Right. Obviously, the whole concept of. I think there's a... Hang, hang on, of pacing out just depends how long your legs are. Okay, I made it up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, 20 was a slight mistake. So I've got to, let's call it nine. Yeah. I'm not going to pace all of that, I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> I just look like a funny chicken. Um, <laughs> what we've got, we've got pear trees. And we've got more pear trees, apple trees. I've got I'm to. Not sure, is that a pear? That's an apple, isn't it? Oh dear, we're not very good at this, are we? No. It's a persimmons, that's why. It's a Sharon ah, fruit. Right, it's neither pear nor apple, it just happens yeah. to be round and green. And obviously, we're a bit silly. Um, what have we got? I think that's an apple. Hang on, we're going to have to inspect them, darling. We're just making it up otherwise. Apple! Okay, we've got an apple. And another apple. And plum. Yeah, you've got really good variety. Yeah. Now, to Paul's left of the camera there, basically it's a hedgerow of brambles. But I think there is actually a wire fence in there that the brambles are all... Well, there is. Yeah, there is. So, uh, and as the trees are all planted along one side, if you wanted to pop some hardcore down, here, you could just make a track along that left-hand side that would give you access to the back of the property. So, for example, if you wanted to come and, and put a caravan or a camper van here so you could live in that whilst renovating, that's absolutely doable because you've just got access through the back of the property here. Yeah, there's plenty of space there to do that. We got a bit confused and we parked in the neighbour's garden, so we're going to have to go and sort that out in a minute. And maybe turn around now, Paul, because then you get in the view. That, that, that's quite lovely. Long stretch of land. Our car parked in the neighbour's. Thanks, guys. Um, and the big mountain in the background. Beautiful. So, are we going to sort of cut here and then go around to the front of the property? Uh, now at the front of the property. So... I believe you can get the whole of the facade and you can just see just how tall it is and where I talked about having three levels. I mean, 
obviously the underneath height is 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 brilliant which is what you you only get that with the old sort of manor houses the moneyed properties from years ago um, in, in order for to clarify to you the boundary here okay and then obviously if these doors were put to sort of frosted glass simply because you you, you I don't think you get a lot of traffic passing, but just for privacy, light's going to flood into the underneath of this property. This is where we will go up in a minute. But this here is the lovely courtyard, um, sorry, the arched gateway that I was referring to when we were at the back of the garden, that you could drive in and use that as your main entrance if that's what you wish to do. But what we're going to do is well come on yep we're gonna come in here and just i mean the steps themselves they're slate tops it's so old it's lovely and if we just so this is the original front door actually i mean and you get the dressed stone there look just take this off silly paint beautiful but if we carry on here, then you get a better impression of where we were. Because obviously uh, we were just stood on the other side of where the purple flowers are, that fence. So this is your covered area. It's, it's at just over 30 square metres. So that would create a really nice sort of barbecue area. Oh, hello, cat. There's also a well there, which is very important. Always, everybody wants water. And then you've got beautiful courtyard, private courtyard garden, but still with the potential that if you want to grow your own and do that thing, keep animals, chickens, whatever, you've got the land at the back to do it. You've also got doors to the left here, which we can't get through. Everything looks old and shabby. I'll, you know, there's no point pretending otherwise. But... That can be changed. It's all of just the facade. You know, if these were jet washed, they'd look completely different. There's a huge amount of stuff here that can be done. I do think maybe the property's already had a ring beam, but I, I'm not sure about that. You can see here the stone. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. That's, that's a question for later. But there's two doorways here that... I'm pretty sure going to the kitchen. Yep. And there's a big kitchen in there. I can't remember where that goes. Maybe it's sort of the kitchen, but let's go and find out. So, and all the windows have, they're all dressed stone, painted. I don't wonder when that came in fashion to paint the stone. Anyway, it did. So, we've entered into a beautifully wide hallway. So actually, if you just turn round, sorry, and just look at me, ta-da! So I've just, we've just come through the main doors and I wanted to show the width, the width <laughs> of the hallway. Because again, this is, you only get this in the older houses. To shut the doors because the light, all you could see was the light blasting behind me. But just look at the character. These, the doors, and actually, there's pretty hard wood. I don't know what wood it is. But I'm not a wood expert. So, but the ceilings, the floors, I mean, debatable. The floors are probably going to have to get ripped out. But Paul and I have been debating over whether, you know, if you could keep all of these, somehow suspend your walls and put a new floor in, it's absolutely stunning. The heights, it needs a new roof. There's no getting away from it. Okay, so this is the first room on the left as you walk into the property. And then... Directly opposite, which must be the door that I just didn't know which door it was, from the balcony. Yeah. That's the balcony, isn't it? Yeah. So actually, if that was open, and again, if that was glass, light flooding in. I mean, it's not like it's that dark, really. I wonder, but if, I wonder if that was once a window. Or just a bookshelf. They do, they, do, they build these shelves in, don't they? Yeah. They do, it, do it, it's, had, it's a cupboard. Yeah. It's probably the old storage cupboards. Yeah. Because that's what they did. You get the old houses and you've actually got cupboards inlaid. I mean, it's such a huge amount of work to put that in stone. 
So we've got two rooms either side of the main hallway. That are, mm, this is slightly smaller. If you're inclined to, and if you can't keep the wood and you don't want to do it, you could just rip that out and make a great big room there. Entering into what was clearly the, the lounge area, and probably was originally anyway, we have, you can see that they had the wood burner there, and we can see, so you still got on all the windows throughout the entire property, as like the previous rooms, and look at the doorways. So above the doorways, you've got the windows, which gives, you've got the height and those little panelled windows. Then we are going through to a kitchen area. Now, yeah, so we're going through this little corridor, which we're going to come back to, into an area of the property. I mean, it's a lovely big kitchen, isn't it? It is a lovely big kitchen, indeed. And, yeah, it's a huge kitchen. Yeah. Um, this is definitely a kitchen diner. I mean, you'd, ha you'd have a... A dining table in here as well, wouldn't well, you? It's a large sort of kitchen. Yeah, but uh, an I island. I guess easily. you'd have a central island, probably, wouldn't you, in these oh, days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're cool, really. There's a bathroom on the end here, somewhat rudimentary. <laughs> somewhat. But it exists, and that means there's a fossa, and I can't put the toilet seat down because there isn't one. And then here. Don't stand there. Here goes out to the balcony where we were at the very beginning. I said these are the doors into the kitchen. So this area here has had a new roof. Okay, great height, lovely, adds to the whole general feel of the property of well of this space here. Yeah, I mean there's, there's fantastic height everywhere in this property, there are. isn't there? Now I'm not entirely sure how and we probably should have discussed this previously, I climbed up there. Yeah, but it was way too steep for you to do that. Whoa, 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 oh my word. Okay, I'm going to try and stop the ladder falling down with a husband twice my weight on it. Um, right, so now, obviously I can't see what he's looking at, but I was there earlier. You need a new roof. What I'm looking at is Paul's bum, basically. Um, you need a new roof, but the point was you've got great height. Ah, please don't stand on me. Okay, that your next step is the floor, not my foot. Brilliant. Made it. <laughs> One funny little feature that we found. Go on, you've got to, because nobody knows what that's for. <laughs> and amazingly, nobody else noticed it. The little doorway. Littlest doorway. Which... Doesn't actually go anywhere. It goes directly to Pixie Hollow. It does. I might just hop in there in a minute. Right. So that doorway went where? We've got to find it now, haven't we? I mean, these doors, okay, come on, Paul. We were discussing what you can and can't keep, and I always no, you like to keep for sure. You could refurbish those. Yeah, it, this is not a soft wood. No. So the ceilings, where they have not been affected by rain coming in, because there are places where they have been. The door frames, yeah, door the frames. doors, all of that can be kept. Yeah. Treated and kept. Yeah. So, good. Right, we've, we actually look. They're beautiful. Look. Absolutely gorgeous. Now let's go and find Pixie Hollow. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I've lost it. It's behind that door there. Ah. Oh. Right, it really didn't go anywhere. No, this is this is the bizarrest thing. If anyone knows what was going on here, yeah, do we'd let be. Us, do we'd, let us know. Hey. Do let us know. Yeah, do let us know, because it's just really bizarre. It's got a proper frame, and I was thinking. Oh, well, it was obviously, it's been cut in half, but it hasn't been cut in half. Okay, so, we're going to have I'm to go. Here. You're still there? Well, you're looking at, we were here, this oh, is... Oh, no, we've already done this. We? We've already done this, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, back to me, darling. Back to me. This way. So, back out the front door, where you're probably going to get blinded, so maybe we're going to have to cut. And, well, let's find out. Blinded? 
Oh, if you can do it, that's brilliant. We'll just keep going because, and these stairs, I mean, the type, we're in an area where the, the natural stone is different from where we live, which is Alviathery. So we tend to have sandstone here. Limestone. Okay, limestone. There's a water supply attached. Um, here, we're, we've, we're up in the area of the Sheesh villages. So it's more like, ah, a, <laughs> uh, closer to a Welsh slate. So we've got one door. Hang on, don't follow me and let me just see. No, there's more than one door. Let's try this one first. Huge slate entrance way. Now, we're going to have an issue here because we, well, let's just try it. The light's gone. I'm very sorry. We've lost light. So if you come in, are you going to be able to see anything? What we've got, I'll just describe it. You have, hopefully, if nothing else, you can see the light coming in around the door. So that's just showing you the height. I mean, I'm nowhere near touching the ceiling. It's huge height down here. Now, there's obviously, there's beams been put in and there's work that started. I mean, uh, the, the previous owners were living in this property and, for example, in this room here, which leads to the other double door um, onto the road, where I talked about frosted glass, uh, this was used as a storage room. Um, rather heavy duty. But the frames in, concrete walls have gone in, it was, you know, it was used, it was insulated, it was actually used for a, a cool room for, for foods. Now this area here lends itself very much to being a stairwell. Well, like those joists were put in to create a stairwell. Ah, okay. Deliberately. Okay, so this was going to be the stairwell. Yeah. Yeah. And therefore you connect both sides of the property. Ah, now I'll just... the door there. Yeah, just when we go around the other side, obviously we've already walked around the property and thought about what we would do. There. So I thought you'd create a door here so that everywhere links to this one unit where you go up and yeah, down. Nice okay. Yeah. And then from here, we need to go back outside. You probably need to get, can you get the old barrel? Yeah. It's a shame. They, uh, I mean, that is super old, and I would say that would have been an olive oil barrel. Yeah, yeah. And they are it's actually... Ceramic, ceramic olive oil pot. Yeah, they're actually worth a lot of money. Well, they are when they're not cracked like that. That's just old. Anyway, let's stop, let's not focus on that. Let's go. Okay, back out here and round the corner to... <laughs> okay, proper rudimentary toilet. We thought the other one was rudimentary. There you go. <laughs> Looks like the toilet's got a siphon. <laughs> yeah, I think I've just. I know it's just drainage. This that they run through the through the toilet. Oh, I'm glad you sussed that one out because I, I was a bit puzzled with there. Uh, luxury shower. I mean. I could actually be a, a luxury shower, but. Yeah, glass fronted. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I think I we've changed know. the subject of the film. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and then, so this would be, if you're using this downstairs as bedrooms, this is the this, uh, sort of arrow, what I call the arrow slit window, into the other side where the stairwell would be and you'd put a door in here. So basically, this could be bedroom en suite. Yeah. And then you could have two bedrooms and a bathroom on the other side. I mean, there are a myriad of possibilities yeah. how you could reconfigure this house. Yeah. I think the important thing is there's loads of space, loads of head height, yeah. hev everywhere in the property. Yeah, all three levels. All three levels and the type of stone, because it would just begs for that stone to be pointed up and cleaned up, and it would look, it would look fantastic. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's a lot of work. There's no getting away from it, but what you'd have in the end is absolutely stunning. But probably we need to turn left and just focus a little bit on the courtyard. I mean, 
I say that. <laughs> it's a little bit overgrown. It's full of cats. It's full of wild cats, yeah. But that's okay. Under there, the benefit of having a covered garden area is, well, something I can personally speak of because when we built one a few years ago, our previous house, it was like one of the best things we did and we used it so much. Sorry, pretty cat. Yeah, all year round. We used all that. year round. And this would be much nicer with those stone yeah. walls at the back there. Yeah. So we put in, you put in a pizza oven, put in a barbecue, you put in some seating and this is becomes, it becomes an extra room. It becomes an outside room, basically, especially one like this that's got two walls and two walls open. You've got this beautiful private garden. And then when you want to go out and do gardening, you just you go that way, a yeah. couple of metres. So, oh, look at the boulders. Oh, go on, get a, get a boulder picture in. Should we finish on boulders? Do you want to sit on the boulder? Bye. Um, I hope we've given you a vague opportunity of what this property is like. I mean, it's huge. Potentially it's huge. 121 or two square metre footprint. Okay, over three floors if you converted your roof. So you've got to have a new roof on this property. It's 242 minimum, isn't it then? It is, over yeah. two storeys. Yeah. But if you put your third storey on, yeah. okay, you've got to have a new roof. So your ring beam it, it's an old stone house, you ring beam it. It gives you that extra bit of height. You've got a proper third floor on this property it would be stunning. So that gives you suddenly, you've got a huge house. Nice location. It has got neighbors either side. Actually, the courtyard's beautiful. Yeah. Really nice, lovely. Land out the back, nice views, private, close to schools, close to cafes. We've just met a really friendly chappy at the top, giving us a toast of mixture. Really lovely couple. Uh, yes. From the and so anyway, it's, yeah, and it's an absolute bargain. Ha, ah, forgot about the price. Bargain, complete bargain. Look at the price. So please do like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.